Hi guys, I'm Ashley and today we have a very different video to my usual ones and I will admit that I've been putting it off slightly because I know this will just be one big babble <laughs> but this has been very highly requested both on YouTube and Instagram so I thought I'd just finally sit and do it and I've been trying to think of the best way to approach it but I thought I'd just sit down and have a chatty kind of video because it's calming, it's soothing, and that's what suits this video. So I thought I'd make a video about ways that I manage my anxiety, especially at home, but a lot of these things can apply when you're out and about as well. It's basically just ways that I find will help manage my anxiety that isn't actually getting help from people. <laughs> I figured it was time to do this because a lot of you guys have been commenting on my videos saying that they like how calming it is and I make it completely clear in my vlogs that I do have anxiety, quite extreme anxiety and depression, which I will get into in a second, but the aim of this video is basically just me explaining some of the ways that I manage my anxiety because I find that all of the things that I found online relating to this very much focus on mindfulness. That may be fine for most people and apparently it is fine for most people because that's what is out there but mindfulness techniques just don't work for me. <laughs> Never has the advice to write things down or breathe deeply or do some kind of calming exercise or anything like that. It just doesn't work for me. And so over the years, I've kind of established my own ways and I figured I'd share in case some of them are helpful to you guys. Editor Ashley is just going to jump in and say that some of these could be considered mindfulness techniques, especially when I talk about grounding techniques. It's just that I haven't seen them in videos regarding that before. And I am also aware that some of these bits of advice, I guess, are time dependent and sometimes the situation doesn't allow for that. But hopefully at some point, you might be able to try these out and maybe they'll help just a little bit. So first of all, I am just going to give a whistle-stop tour of my mental health story, I guess, as much as I hate to say that, but I did ask whether it would be more helpful for me to give context towards where all this has come from, and the majority of you guys said yes. I'm not going to be going into any particular detail because that would be a very long story. I am basically just listing off things that have happened and everything I have but if you'd rather skip past that I will leave a timestamp at the top of the description box so that you can just click on that and it'll take you to where the actual tips advice start I don't know <laughs> can you tell I don't know what to do <laughs> so hello I'm Ashley I have very severe anxiety and depression Woo. <laughs> I think I've had anxiety pretty much my entire life when looking back on what I was like as a child but I just didn't realise it because it wasn't too extreme. However there was just one really random day when I was around 17 years old where my anxiety seemed to stem into a panic attack for no apparent reason. I can remember it very clearly. There was nothing there to trigger a panic attack. I felt completely normal beforehand. I was walking down a completely empty road by myself in the sun. It was quite a nice day. I was on the phone to somebody and then I just stopped breathing. <laughs> As you can imagine, that is quite a scary moment and when I got home, luckily I wasn't too far away. I can't remember too clearly because I was very much in just this weird brain fog at that moment, but I think my dad recognised what had happened because he'd seen it happen to somebody else in the family before. But yeah, all I seem to remember after that is that it seemed to have set off a thing and my anxiety became more of a physical thing rather than just me being a shy human. <laughs> Nothing really too dramatic happened after that until I was 19 years old and that year was one of the worst years of my life, <laughs> to put it simply. I should probably say before continuing that I do tend to word things in a way that's more entertaining. I seem to have a dark sense of humour and you'll see that in how I word things going through this video, so just a pre-warning, I do know that this is completely serious, it's just how I approach life. <laughs> but I jokingly refer to the year that I turned 19 years old as the year that I collected mental health problems because my god did I do just that. So the anxiety that was already there just went absolutely through the roof and I couldn't wake up without feeling ill, I couldn't get by most days and that stemmed into agoraphobia which meant that I couldn't go outside without having panic attacks. It's also triggered my depression which isn't surprising, anxiety and depression do largely go hand in hand but the summer of that year just it wasn't a good time guys and I never want to return to that point because not going to go into detail but you can imagine where my thoughts might have ended up. Yeah that that just that wasn't a good time but from that I was kind of rushed into emergency therapy as they called it which I'm not going to go into because I don't want to put any ideas into anybody's head about what works what doesn't 
it's really dependent on you but all I will say is that as of right now I don't have any kind of therapy and I'm not on any medication so this video is quite literally how I manage life. <laughs> but one thing I did take from that experience is just understanding of what the hell was going on up here because it was officially diagnosed that I have very severe anxiety in that my level of calm would be most people's level of stress. <laughs> Which I actually just find fascinating to know. That that's just it baffles me. But from that it was predicted that 90 to 95 percent of my life I have anxiety symptoms. It's just that I don't realise because I am considered high functioning which basically means I can get by while being anxious most of the time. And as I said I do refer to this year as the year that I collected mental health problems because I was also told that I had eating disorder tendencies and OCD tendencies. The eating disorder one was the strongest because I just go through random phases where food is just nope. The OCD one isn't too extreme which is why it's only called tendencies and not diagnosed as OCD because there would just be certain things that I would really latch onto and if my anxiety was heightened that would also be heightened along with it. So um it's fun times in this head of mine, but I will say, on a lighter note, if there is a lighter note, that I consider myself a lot better from that point. I look back on that year and I'm just like, I never want to hit that point again. I do still have severe anxiety, but I can very much manage it myself for the most part. As I said, I am high functioning, so I can get by most days. It's only when my anxiety is to an extreme and the physical symptoms start coming out that I struggle. And I do still have depression, but again, pretty much go hand in hand so so yes that was um quite a story to take in so I hope that wasn't too much for you guys but from all that happening in the past few years I feel like I have kind of established ways that I can help myself now these might not work for you I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm offering some kind of miracle cure because that's just not the case these are just things that might help if you're feeling a little bit wobbly and everybody's different as I said there are tons and tons of videos out there on mindfulness techniques and things that will help and for the most part they don't work for me but they obviously work for the majority of people because there's so many of them out there. I just wanted to make this video one because you guys wanted it as I said I am pretty open in my vlogs when I'm feeling a bit no and you guys did actively ask me to broach that topic so here I am doing that and hopefully this video can provide a place for you guys to even just feel understood or have someone babble away about things you can relate to. As I've just covered, I can relate to a whole wealth of <laughs> mental health problems. So if you need somebody or want somebody who might understand, then chances are I'm your gal. <laughs> So I think it's time that I finally got into what all this is about. So the first one I just want to get out of the way because I honestly do find this the best tactic a lot of the time and it's already gotten to the extreme of being panicked or anxious or anything. And it's not a nice experience I know but if you're already hitting the stage when you're feeling debilitated in any way, if it's a full-blown panic attack or something like that that you're trying to keep off then just let it happen. The kindest thing you can do to yourself is get that out of your system and then afterwards yes you'll probably feel exhausted, you might even be aching but I'm only saying to do this if you get this every so often because obviously just letting it happen isn't a way to manage it. So this kind of advice is mainly just me saying please be kind to yourself, let it happen, acknowledge that these things are happening and just accept it in some way, don't hate yourself for it, don't beat yourself up for it because I know that's what I used to do and it was honestly just it made everything so much worse. If you have the time and the space and the ability to, give yourself that time to feel these things and then afterwards you'll feel so much better for it. On to the actual advice, my first and probably my key thing is to establish safe grounding techniques. Now what I mean by grounding techniques, I don't know if this is what everybody else means, but what I mean by it is basically a small activity or action that you can do that you really focus on while you're doing it. Now I can't tell you what will work for you because it really is just a trial and error of seeing if something works, seeing if something doesn't, but I will give you some examples of what I mean. So my grounding technique is to drink a warm drink but really focus on the drink. <laughs> so my go-to drink is usually tea but that does depend on how anxious I am because obviously caffeine. I will sometimes have hot chocolate instead but basically and instead of just drinking it I'll sit and I'll think about how the warmth is touching my fingers or if there's any point of my hand that's getting a little bit too hot and if I can readjust that anywhere. Something that's come up since I started listening to ASMR is that I might start tapping my rings against the mug while I'm holding it or tapping my nails against it. Sometimes I'll hold my hand over the top of it and feel the steam against my fingers or kind of move my hand back and forth and notice the temperature difference as I do that. But the main thing is that when I actually take a drink I'll focus on how the warmth of the drink 
feels going down my body, which sounds really strange, but you can feel the temperature of the drink and if you actively focus on it going through your body, that really works for me as a grounding technique because it reminds me that my body is there. Oftentimes your brain just kind of goes off on a massive tangent and it's really hard to rein it back in. So grounded techniques are basically there to ground you. They're there to remind you that you are this physical being and you are there sat in a room living your life. So that's what I do. Now the reason why I specifically said establish a safe grounding technique is because my first grounding technique didn't work for me. It did for a while but my first grounding technique was counting. Now, this did work for me if I was out and about, say that I was at university, for instance, I would start counting the ceiling tiles or I'd start counting the amount of tables I can see in front of me and just different things like that. Say I was doing it now, I would just instantly start counting the books that I can see in front of me. And this did work for me, so it might work for you, but I had to stop it because, as I said, I did have OCD tendencies, so unfortunately this did just stem into that instead. But I did just want to mention it because as I said it did work until that happened so if you don't think that's a risk for you then that might also help. One that I think will help specifically if your brain just keeps going and going and going running a thousand miles an hour is to just sit and think about everything that you're touching. Which sounds strange I know but if you just sit there and try and make a list of every single thing that you're touching right at this moment. It forces you to focus on your physical being for a start, but also it just takes the act of your brain running 10,000 miles an hour and hones it into a specific task. Because with this task you can keep breaking it down to as small as possible, make it a competition to see how small of an object you can go. So if I started doing it right now I would say that I'm touching the floor with my foot, the bed that I'm sat on, the clothes that I'm wearing, the jewellery I'm wearing, the makeup I'm wearing, and it does start as simple as that but you can just keep going because the good thing about about this is that you never won't be touching anything because you're always touching the air. You're always touching the oxygen that you're breathing in and things like that so you can really just break it down into every single thing. Just sit and think about any possible thing you are touching right now. You can just keep breaking it down into individual clothing items and just yeah see how small of an item you can get to. It might work, it might not but grounding techniques they're great. <laughs> the next one probably sounds even more silly but basically hype up every single thing you do no matter how small it is because a lot of the time you can get stuck in a rut and just think about all the things you haven't done. So instead flip it around and break down every single thing you do into the minutest possible action and celebrate that, reward yourself for it, whether that be doing work, say you've finished an essay, you can reward yourself with something. It doesn't have to be anything massive, you can just give yourself a biscuit or you don't even have to spend money, you could give yourself reading time, you could add on five minutes towards watching a TV show at the end of the day or something, you could give yourself some extra time scrolling through your phone and just doing nothing and not feeling bad about it. You can really just build up your own kind of reward system but apply it to literally everything and I do mean everything. If you get stuck in a rut it can be so hard to even get up in the morning so if you're ever at the stage when you just want to lay down and curl up in a ball sometimes it's good to just sit there and think I opened my eyes, that's something or I'm breathing right now that's something. Your very existence is something and acknowledge that because it's so so easy to sit there and think I haven't done anything today and then just feel bad about that for the entire time when instead you could try and think I continued breathing today, I opened my eyes, I actually sat up in bed, I got out of bed, I put some clothes on, I went and brushed my teeth and it just very quickly adds up into all of these things that feel so much more successful than just sitting there and doing nothing. Another one that could kind of link to that is to make yourself feel more productive even if you're technically not by your usual standards. What I mean by this is again if you are at the stage where you just want to lay in bed, do nothing, stare at a wall, allow yourself to do that but put on an audiobook for instance or put on a podcast so that you can literally just lay and stare at a wall. But the option of listening is also there. Now I know a lot of people say that they can't focus on things when they're just listening. That's fine, put on a book that you have read before. Listen to one of your favourite books or just put on a podcast that you're not particularly too interested about. Find some random YouTube video and just put that on but at the end of the day you're still doing something, you're still doing something that's productive, especially if it's something like a book where you can add the book to your Goodreads goal once you've finished it. Because even if you don't listen to it, it's not that much of a loss. You can just re-listen to it if need be. If you've already read the book that you're listening to, then it doesn't matter. You still know what's going on. You haven't missed anything. But it also gives your brain the opportunity to latch onto something, to focus on something. The thing is there to listen to if you want to, but also if you zone out, it's not that much of a loss. But if you do manage to get through an audiobook or if you manage to 
to finish listening to a podcast then you've done something to do and that's fine. If your brain is at the point where it's going too quickly and you can't focus on one particular task, one thing I do is actually force myself to multitask. Now I'm a person that just multitasks at everything they do anyway, but if you give your brain more things to possibly focus on, then it's more likely that you will actually get caught by one of them. None of the tasks have to be anything that's particularly taxing or something that you need to focus your attention on. Again, it can be listening to an audiobook, but usually just do something else with your hands. So for instance, you could watch a film, watch a TV show, watch YouTube videos, listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook. Maybe while painting your nails, doing some knitting, drawing something, you can do anything. If you can do tasks that engage as many of your senses as possible then it's more likely that your brain will eventually catch on to something. But again, even if that doesn't happen and you're just doing these things without really focusing on anything, there's not anything lost. I don't know how helpful that one will be in particular because it does depend what kind of person you are but I feel like if you just raise the chances of your brain being caught by something, it just gives yourself a more likely chance of getting out of whatever else your head has run away with. So I thought I'd throw that one in anyway. And then the last one isn't necessarily something you can do, it's more just a recommendation of something that works really well for me. But when I'm struggling to get to sleep, or even just to get to sleep anyway, I listen to ASMR. Now this is quite a popular thing for people who are stressed, anxious, anything like that. There has been a whole host of ASMR videos for COVID-19 and that whole situation, so there's plenty of content out there but I know that ASMR isn't for everybody and it is really weird when you start listening to it like there's just no matter what ASMR is weird <laughs> because if you don't know what it is it's basically just really close up sounds. So the microphone will be really enhanced and people will make really quiet noise into the microphone and if you have earphones in it's just ugh. it can sound so comforting and just it's almost like a completely different experience and there's lots of different types of ASMR so if you just listen to one video and you don't like it, find a different type. I know that one type that works particularly well for me, especially when I'm feeling anxious, is the ASMR videos that read out loud from books. So people will do really soft-spoken reading, sometimes even whispering, and it's just really soothing to listen to them and they tend to have a much slower pace to it as they're going through it. And it just gives this kind of steady rhythm to listen to and because it is so almost close to your ears, it's hard not to focus on it and even if you do then you'll probably fall asleep because ASMR is just that calming. <laughs> In the description box of this video I'll leave some links to some of my favourite ASMR videos that read from books. Since this channel is a book related channel and I figured that might be what you guys would be more inclined to listen to, I actually do want to try making one of these ASMR read with me videos myself but I don't, I don't know. I feel like I don't have a soothing voice and my reading out loud abilities are awful. <laughs> But I am tempted, so we'll see. <laughs> but there are tons and tons of videos out there and I would highly recommend because nothing has ever gotten me to sleep quite so quickly or quite so deeply as ASMR videos do. Just make sure you turn off autoplay first because you don't want the next recommended video coming on full volume. <laughs> so I think that just about covers it. Hopefully you guys took something from that. I feel like I've just done a big mess of a babble. Hopefully it helps some of you guys even just listening to me talk about anything like this. If you want to follow up the recommendation of listening to audiobooks then I will actually have a video coming on Friday of audiobook recommendations if you want to try something that might be new to you rather than listening to a favourite so keep an eye out for that one if you are interested. But I think this video is ending here so I hope you enjoyed it. Is this a video you can enjoy? I don't know but if it helps anybody at all then that's fine. Hopefully it does somebody. <laughs> Remember that I have some recommendations of things linked down in the description box along with all of my social media and some of the bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now I hope you're having a lovely day, take care of yourselves my loves and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye!